I haven't owned a NVIDIA card since the 7000 series back in 07. So I had to look up the difference in overclocking a NVIDIA card versus the ATI and AMD cards that I've been using since 2009. One immediate difference is the overclocking tools are not built into NVIDIA's control panel, like they are in AMD's Catalyst Control Center. So I went ahead and downloaded a couple of these tools. I'll have them linked in the description below. The first tool I played around with was MSI Afterburner. This is supposed to work with almost any video card out. And the next one I downloaded was EVGA Precision X, which is an alternative tool. Of course, GPU-Z, so I can verify the clocks and temperatures. And finally, a benchmarking and stress testing tool, Furmark. I also tested a selection of games for my Steam library that I could run in a multi-monitor configuration. I don't have a 2K or a 4K display, so my three 1080p Dell monitors will pretty much be right in the middle of that. When I overclock, I like to look at the clock speeds of identical cards, and fortunately there were a few reviews up that pointed almost identical settings. Uh, Guru3D was able to push the card up 150MHz on the GPU and 500MHz on the memory. They pushed up the voltage 87mA and increased the power to 112%. I settled on the same clock speeds, but kept the voltage stock and only put the power limiter up to 110% for headroom. I didn't find a difference between running the card at my settings and the settings that they used. To overclock the card using MSI Afterburner, you have to drag each bar to the setting you want. Use the arrow keys to get the exact number you want and press apply. You can save the settings to a profile, and if you want the computer to start with that profile, you can select Apply Overclocking at System Startup. I had some issues with MSI Afterburner keeping my settings. So I downloaded EVGA's Precision X and applied the same settings in there. I tested out the settings I input by running the benchmarking tool Furmark to make sure I wasn't going to have any artifacting or heating issues. If you toy around with the clock settings, you can run Furmark windowed and make minor adjustments, though honestly the performance of this card with these adjustments puts it at roughly the same performance as a stock reference GTX 980, so keep that in mind. The ambient temperature in my house is 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25.5 degrees Celsius. The idle temperature of the card is sitting between 33 and 36 degrees Celsius, and that's with the clocks throttled back as we're not gaming. Uh, when playing games at 5760 by 1080, completely maxed out, such as Crisis 2 or Saints Row the Third, the temperatures topped out at 65 degrees Celsius with the stock fan settings, and 60 degrees Celsius with the fans at 100%. Running Furmark with these stock fan settings, the card maxed out at 74 degrees Celsius, which also happened to be the percentage that the fans were running at. With the fan on 100%, the attempts maxed out at 66 degrees, so knocking off about 8 degrees Celsius at the cost of a little bit of noise. With the overclock, the card still idles in the 33 to 36 degree range, but playing with the same games uh, at 5760 by 1080, uh, the temperatures topped out at 67 and 63 with the fans at 100%. I ran Furmark again with these two scenarios, and with the stock fan settings, the overclocked 970 went up to 76 and at 100% topped out at 70, so 4 degrees different than the stock settings. Here are some of the performance gains on the Gigabyte GTX 970 G1. On the 1080 preset in Furmark, the stock card managed a score of 4224, averaging 70 frames per second. The overclock settings increased the score to 4856, and an average of 82 frames per second, an increase of over 17%. I ran my two favorite multi-monitor games, maxed out at 5760 by 1080 the first game was Saints Row the Third. Uh, with the stock card settings, I averaged 43 frames per second. The overclock settings bumped that up to 51 frames per second, an increase of almost 19%. The next game was Crisis 2. Uh, the stock card settings averaged 32 frames per second, and the overclock settings averaged 37, an increase of nearly 16%. After researching the overclocking of other GTX 970s, the G1 definitely has the best cooling solution and the most headroom. As I said in the first video, an overclocked GTX 970 should perform roughly the same as a reference 980. This card proves that it can even do better than that. I played it safe with my card, I'm positive that it could have been tweaked a little bit higher, and if you're looking for a GTX 970, I definitely recommend picking up the Gigabyte G1. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at thatsitguys.com. Thanks for watching.